day two. In the last episode of My Summer Car Guide, I showed you the first things you should do in a new save of My Summer Car, how to get the Rusco, how to drive the Rusco, and uh, that's, that's pretty much it actually. This episode is going to be pretty straightforward. Uh, typically, when I started to save, I built the body of the Assassin's Creed, which means the suspension components, the interior, the doors, and any parts that are not part of the engine. Now, typically, if you install the rear trailing arms or the rear seat, this will start the timer to gain the keys to Uncle's van. So, it's also important to do this early on as well to get the van as fast as possible. Even though I picked the Rusk as my first car, the van is 10 times better than the Rusk in every way. So, to get the van as soon as possible is going to be the best thing for you. Now, I know there are already several guides on YouTube of how to build the car completely. And I'm, I'm, I'm pretty sure most people know how to build the car as it is, but since I'm doing a guide about the whole game, it only makes sense to cover every single detail about the game, which includes the task of, of course, building the car. Building the car being, well, the main goal of the game, obviously. I mean, you don't have to build the car, you can do whatever the hell you want, basically, but, you know, you're kind of boring. With that being said, I guess let's get cracking to it then. The first thing I want to install is the subframe. The subframe is held in place by four 10mm bolts. Up next we install the left and right wishbones. Just like the subframe, these are held by two 10mm bolts. Up next is the left and right spindles. These are each held in place by one 12mm bolt. Up next is the front disc brakes. These use a single 14mm bolt, but don't put them in yet. I'll show you why in a second. Now put in the steering rack. This uses four 9mm bolts. Now put in the front struts. These use four 9mm bolts at the bottom of each strut that attaches to the back of the spindle. And three 10mm bolts that bolt into the bottom of the car. Then add the left and right steering rods. As I was saying, the left and right steering rods, these are held in place by a singular 12mm bolt. Now we add the half shafts. Now this is why I said to not bolt in the 14mm bolt on the disc brakes. Uh, for some reason you're able to still install the engine with the half shafts mounted and fully bolted in. I'm not sure if that's some kind of bug or or what. Uh, so far Topless has not passed it, so I mean I guess it's... I guess you can call it an exploit. I mean, it saves you like maybe I don't know, like th two minutes of extra work after you put the engine in. One thing I forgot to mention earlier: if you for some reason have to remove the entire engine, whether it be through the engine hoist or just beer crate magic, uh, even if you unbolt the uh, half shafts from the engine, they'll still pop out anyway. So just be aware of that. Uh, when you have to put them back in or have to remove them So uh, just just make sure you you know do that, but as I said, it's held by a one 14 millimeter bolt at each end uh, With a disc brake and then three nine millimeter bolts on The ends on the inside of the engine bay now. It's time to install the rear suspension components First that we have to start with is the rear trailing arms. The rear trailing arms are held in place by two 12mm bolts on each side. Next up we add the coil springs, it's pretty straightforward, just kind of finagle it until you can get it in there. Up next we add the rear struts. These can be a little bit tricky sometimes, uh, you kind of just have to angle it a certain way to get it to line up and go in, but it shouldn't be too difficult. The rear struts use one 12mm bolt at the top and two 6mm bolts at the bottom of each strut. Then the last part of the rear suspension is the rear drums. The rear drums are pretty straightforward, just like the disc brakes, they use a singular 14mm bolt on each one. Up next is to put on the wheels we got from the last episode. Now you don't really need them to finish the car right now. But it does make installing undercarriage parts like the fuel tank and exhaust a lot easier. Oh, who could that be? Here's Kamu Mutamaba! Here's Kamu 
sta solita, sta, osca sulla tua calla, non c'è sulla nuca di scavese. E sulla osca alla tua, e non c'è che non c'è tua, ma c'è calla, te ne conni, e non c'è noia la tua, e te passi vedile. E mi la muta allo. Okay, so we just got our first phone call uh, for our first job, practically, and that is going to the lake to get some fish for Grandma. Now, actually, this is a great opportunity because I was going to go to the island anyway, but now I have an actual reason to go there. So, probably later in this episode, I will show you what I usually grab when I go to the island and all that other stuff. And, of course, how to get the tractor back, obviously. After you've installed all your wheels, uh, don't bolt them up just yet uh, because... You'll want to paint them first, obviously. Now, you, I usually paint them black for the steel wheels, but honestly, you can paint them whatever color you want. The only reason why I paint them black is because that's the color they are in the main menu. Each wheel is held in place by four 13mm bolts. Now, this is also probably a good time to tune the front alignment, that this is probably obviously out of alignment. Um, Usually I do this around this time, but because of the fact that Grandma called me and because of the fact I want to get the fish trap in the lake as soon as possible to get fish for her, I'm going to hold off on that until probably the end of this episode. Now that we have wheels on the car and the car is somewhat off the ground, this is a good time to install the undercarriage part. So we'll be installing the fuel tank, the exhaust, um, and probably the shift linkages and the uh, brake linings. Even though Topless Gun disabled the ability to basically use a beer case as a uh, physics object in the game, you can still use a beer case to, well, as a temporary jack almost. I actually prefer to use a beer case as a jack because it's a lot quicker, easier, and I can just slide it in and out whenever I need to. The fuel tank is held to the bottom of the car by seven 11 millimeter bolts. There's also a singular 12 millimeter bolt to connect the fuel line to the fuel tank as well. Up next is the exhaust pipe, which is held in place by three 7mm bolts. I don't normally put the muffler in until I have the quote-unquote ricer dual muffler exhaust, so I typically leave that out until um, I get the uh, ricer muffler. Now on to the steering column. This is held in place by two 8mm bolts. Put the radiator in next. This is held in place by four 7mm bolts. Now we add the brake master cylinder and the clutch master cylinder. These are held in place by two 8mm bolts at the front and one 9mm bolt connected to each pedal. Up next we add the brake lining. There are 11 7mm bolts on this one. They are here, 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 and here. And then one bolt on each wheel here, here, here and here. Now install the clutch line. This also uses 7mm bolts, but it only needs two, here and here. Now we install the electrics. These use two 8mm bolts and the fuel strainer, which also uses one 8mm bolt. Now install the gear stick. This uses three 6mm bolts. After that, just put in the gear linkage, which is also one of those parts that like can still be bolted even though the engine's not inside. This uses three 5mm bolts. Now we begin to install the interior of the Satsuma, starting with the dashboard. The dashboard is held in place by two 10mm bolts, one of which is inside the glove box. Up next is the dashboard meters. Now I don't know about you guys, but typically my setup is I have the dashboard clock that you come comes with the car and leave it in there and then use the uh, pod RPM gauge rather than installing the GT gauge. Though in my most recent save I have gone back to using the uh, regular GT gauge. I might probably do it this time around as well when I do a video about how to find all the GT parts. The clock gauge is held in place by two 7mm bolts. Don't forget the radio. The dashboard gauges are bolted with two 10mm bolts. Up next is the handbrake, which is bolted to the floor of the car with four 8mm bolts, and the underside has one 5mm bolt. Next up is the rear seat. The rear seat is bolted by two 9mm bolts. Next up is the front driver and passenger seat. 
which are both bolted into the floor of the car by four 9mm bolts just like the rear seat. Then we put in the steering wheel which is held in place by a singular 10mm bolt. Now we put in the front and right fenders. Now these could be a little tricky and they might pop out sometimes and if you find yourself in a situation where they pop out more than twice or three times and you can't get them to get back in, just save your game. I think it might be some kind of glitch or something, I don't know, but usually saving your game will fix that. Each of these are held in place by five 5mm five bolts. Then we move on to the front and rear bumpers, which are both held in place by two 8mm bolts. Although I kind of wish they were held in place by more than two because I remember back in the day, you used to fall off quite a bit actually. Now we put on the doors. Now as you can see in this clip right here, uh, this is what I was talking about where like, uh, I would put it in, I put it in, try to put it in two times and it fell out. And the third time I tried putting it back in, it just wouldn't go back in. No matter how I finagled it, so I think it's just one of those glitches where like if you just save your game, it should fix it, but it is a little bit annoying sometimes. I didn't save my game at this time because I figured I'll probably save it eventually later on and put it back in, either during the later part of this video or um, after I finish making the video. Each door is held in place by four 10mm screws. Now we just put in the boot lid, which is held in place by four 6mm screws. And then we just add the tail lights to the back of the car. And that's pretty much it for the most part. I don't typically install the front grille or the headlights until I have headlight bulbs. And you should take this opportunity to actually to wire up the front headlights, because if you don't do it now, you'll have to remove the grille again to do it later. It's pretty straightforward, you just kind of wiggle it around until you see front light connector, and then wire up each headlight. We also need to do the same option if you want to wire up the marker lights later on, but we'll cover that once I get the parts in. And that's pretty much it for right now, basically. Um, we have the majority of the car built, but I'm not done quite yet with this episode. I'm going to probably spend a majority of the rest of this episode going to the island, showing what you should probably grab or what you could optionally grab, and uh, put the lights in, put the grill in, fix the alignment, and uh, that's it, I think, yeah. Oh yeah, I almost forgot. Don't forget to install the fuel pipe. Uh, I had it in my original video, I just must have edited it out by mistake. With the majority of our car building out of the way, now it's time to head over to the island. It's getting pretty late anyway, so it's a good idea to get some sleep, and we'll be able to get all the stuff we want to get from the island on our way though anyway. Alright, so now we're at the island now. Now, once you get to the island, it's a good idea to lay down the fish trap as soon as possible. Now, as far as I know, the island is one of the only places that can give you a high yield of fish in the quickest way possible. I experimented a little bit with other places like the Venti Shack and the dock over by Futari's by the abandoned mansion, but typically I think Venti Shack and the cottage island are one of the best places to have the fish trap. Uh, now keep in mind when you put the fish trap down to not uh, put it too far out into the lake or you won't be able to grab it again. Typically I always put it right near the edge of the dock right underneath one of the pontoon thingies and I'm, I'm still able to grab it and I'm still able to get a high quantity of fish. So it's always a good spot just leave it right there. Get that out of the way. I think it's time that we finally get a good night's sleep. Day three. <laughs> now that dawn has come at last, it's time to load some stuff into the boat. Now, realistically, you only need the kill you bucket. Because, well, you need to build kill you, obviously. But if you really want to, you can also grab some of the optional items, which include the coffee pot. Although I suppose this is kind of necessity if you don't want to like be tired all the time, if you want to like stay up late doing something. So yeah, I guess it's kind of necessary. Obviously, the coffee cup too, of course. Power on. 
Full power. Yes, my coffee coffee machine is full power. The lantern, fireworks bag, and the film camera, which I for some reason accidentally threw in the lake while trying to take a picture. And that pretty much covers the basics for the island. Now, as far as I know, the island is one of the few things besides cigarettes you can do to help reduce stress. Now, I'm not sure if your family owns this island, or it's a communal thing, or whatever, but it isn't really explained in the game. So I'm going to just assume that, like, it's an island for everybody to use, I'm not really sure. But, it's pretty cool. With that out of the way, it's time to take the boat back to town so I can pick up the tractor, pick up some light bulbs, and get the hell out of here. Now that we're finally in town, we can go over, pick up the tractor, and put all the stuff we've grabbed into the tractor. Now this next part would have showed me saving my game and basically explained that even though it's you know 7 or 8 o'clock a.m., uh, we can save our game, which progresses time by one hour, so we don't have to wait around for forever. I pressed F9 because F9 is the uh, TV camera key in my summer car, but I keep forgetting that F9 was also the key I bound for pausing video recording on OBS, so whoops, honestly you didn't miss much. And luckily I saved, so whatever footage I forgot to capture after I saved, I'll just redo again because I already saved. After we have, after we have, re after, after we have loaded back to the game, you'll need to buy the following items. Two headlight bulbs and one canister of two-stroke fuel. And now I see my post order has arrived, but unfortunately I don't have enough money to pay for the post order, the light bulbs, the two-stroke fuel, and of course the fuel we never paid for the other day. So for right now I'm going to probably just pay for the... I'm going to just pay for the... I'm just going to go pay for the uh, stuff I bought at the store. Now, when you start a new save, the boat only has enough fuel to get you from the house to town and barely enough to make it back, so it's always good to grab some two-stroke fuel. However, we're not taking the boat back with us, but I always like to leave an extra canister at the, st at the shop in case you need to fuel up the scooter or the boat or something like that. So it's always good to have an extra canister just lying around, whether it be at home and in town as well. With all of our gear packed away, it's time to head on. Junk car spotted. Nice. Now that we made it back to the house, I'm going to just throw all this shit inside because y'all finally don't want to see me sorting this shit. And we'll install the headlights and the grill. After you've taken your headlight bulbs out of the bag, you can unbox them and throw the boxes in the barrel. Now, I'm not sure if the barrel, if, if like, putting stuff in the trash barrel, like, will improve performance if you, like, quote unquote burn it. Like, I think it just deletes it from the game world, as far as I know anyway. Both front headlamps are mounted with two 7mm bolts. I also forgot one 5mm bolt uh, in the right fender uh, I put on earlier. After that you can put on the grill, which is mounted with two 6mm bolts. And since I reloaded my save, or I saved my game and loaded back in, I was able to put the uh, passenger door on, 
And as I said before, the passenger door, just like the driver's door, is fitted with four 10 millimeter bolts. Don't forget to put on the mud flaps. Completely optional, of course. And of course, another optional thing is if you want, you can put the hubcaps on as well. Alright, so you probably know that was Tavaka calling about the hay bale job. Now a lot of people don't really like the hay bale job because it takes too long and oh it doesn't pay enough and all this and that. And until recently, I think a lot of people haven't had the motivation to do it until the Panier 250 mod came out. But most people probably just cheat anyway. Which I don't blame them to be honest, you know. Um, but I will definitely do a guide about that so at some point. In fact, I remember the hay bale job being a lot easier back in the day when the beer cage could be used to move the hay bales around. Not anymore though. Now on to the alignment portion. Now, typically what you want to do is you want to grab a 14 millimeter wrench and you want to lean in and you want to scroll up or down with your mouse wheel until you've reached the complete end of travel for the alignment of that particular uh, wheel or suspension component. After you've reached the end of travel for that component, you want to scroll the opposite direction of your mouse wheel you scrolled before about 60 times. This should completely straighten out your alignment. That should be it. Your alignment should now be completely straight. Uh, you can try to eyeball a little bit too, but it looks like to me I think I got it good. So it should be all set. Now if you bought the fire extinguisher like I did in the last episode, uh, it's only two 6mm bolts. You don't really need it right now, but if you're planning on doing a rally later on, it's just, I just feel like it's better to just buy it now. And if for some reason your engine catches fire, you know, you're always good to have it I suppose. That about, that about does it for uh, this, this second episode of my guide here. Um, when this video goes live, I'll probably premiere it probably. Uh, I'll be posting a community tab poll where you guys can vote for what my next episode will be about. Should it be about the hay bale job or should it be about how to make money quickly? Now, I, I can already see what y'all are going to vote for, So, uh, but I'll post it anyway. I'll probably link it in the description or something like that. Um, but yeah, uh, I just checked my channel right now. I've got 1.1k on my first episode, so I'm really glad y'all like it. Uh, if you guys have any any tips that I don't know about, by all means, please tell me, because I would love to share them. So I think that just about does it uh, for this episode. So I don't know when the next one will be out. I might try to stream sometime this week, but until then, uh, keep giving me suggestions if you have any. So. I will see you guys in the next episode. Have a good night.